Hi, welcome to this video. So I'd like to show you how you can learn P-Spice using ORCID. I've been getting a lot of questions this summer lately about how do I simulate this circuit? How do I do this simulation? What does this error mean in SPICE? So I want to show you what you can do to get started at least in P-Spice. Okay. Open up ORCAD, whether you have 17.2, 16.x, you know, or 17.4, whatever version you have, you should be able to open up ORCAD Capture. And in ORCAD Capture, you just go to the home or start page, excuse me. All right, so you have the start page that automatically opens, and then you can click on a link that has uh, Tutorials, so this link here that says Featured Resources, you can look at Tutorials. This is where you can learn about ORCAD Capture if this is where you need to start. I feel like maybe many people don't know that this is, exists, but it's right there. But anyway, talking about the P-SPICE, right? Go to Help, Learning P-SPICE, and then ORCAD Capture is going to show you an overview of P-SPICE, the different types of things you can analyze in PSPICE. Now you might have some errors here, but that's fine. What's really interesting is the folders on the left. So you can click on the folders. It'll tell you what to look for. If you need a refresh on, let's say, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and different topics, then you can do that. And there are all these other things here. You can probably skip this. Uh, let me show you something. So how to create a design. Um, a lot of people, if they're using 17.2 or version 16, they might find that they cannot simulate their circuit. So what you want to do is create your design with the analog or mixed analog digital or mixed AD thing. This is what you need to simulate the circuit. All right. So if you find that you have your window here and you don't see the P-SPICE option like how it has here, that's because you did not choose analog mixed AD. And what's cool is you can open the design as well. I forgot to mention this. You just click on open design and it will open for you automatically. You do your test, follow the tutorial. It's really great. Now there's running the simulation. Uh, let's see. The other kinds of analysis you can do is transient analysis. What's transient analysis? That means uh, it's, it's the same as hooking up a circuit physically, right? And then say putting your oscilloscope probes on the circuit and then watching how the circuit behaves with respect to time as time progresses like you have your stopwatch and saying oh the signal increases and it goes out of balance and things like that so that's transient transient means like temporary uh, temporary time transient analysis so some good things here the ac analysis pretty much ac analysis is the same as when you hook up a function generator if you know don't know what a function generator is look online for a function generator it's this box where you get your wires you stick it on your circuit and then you can send specific signals like uh, sine waves square waves whatnot uh, triangular waves through the function generator from the function generator through the circuit and then you can vary the frequency the amplitude of the signal and then you can see and investigate how the circuit responds to that signal all right what we're doing here is simulating that same real world process in the ac analysis but in, instead of the physical devices we're using p spice of course and we're getting results on how a circuit would behave with respect to an input signal frequency. What's really powerful is when you change the frequency in the, typically the, what's it called, the log scale, the, uh, the logarithmic scale with base 10, and you can see how the circuit behaves over those, very fre those varying frequencies. We have basic electronics, so this is a good way to review your different theorems. You need your Kirchhoff's voltage law, your Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, one of my professors, the director of electrical engineering, he said, all of electrical and electronics engineering is KVL and KCL, all right? So you can check that out. Diodes, transistors for your BJTs, data converters. And also, you may not have known this, but 
these bikes can simulate digital electronics too. This is a real cool thing. Uh, however, it does not simulate. Mm, okay, it's not. It doesn't by default simulate a PIC microcontroller or something, but it can simulate AND and OR gates. So if you have a digital circuits class, I use this for digital uh, circuits just to verify my things like Carnot maps, my uh, my logic, and my binary logic and all of that stuff. You can use this to verify your digital circuit analysis and all that stuff. Plus, if you have logic gate chips, you can do that too. So, you know, when you're doing your logic gate chip labs, you can simulate in PSPICE and to, to predict what's going to happen. Uh, Three-phase circuits is good for power distribution networks. Uh, well, not power distribution network like in the printed circuit board, but I'm talking about like three-phase, like when you're working with electrical systems, uh, uh, power distribution. So when I took the power distribution class, advanced power distribution, like on the AC grid, I could use this to simulate what happens in the three phase, Y versus Delta connection. Uh, so yeah, take a look at that. This is also something you learn in circuits too, right? The AC part of circuits. This be, why do we learn this? It becomes applicable in power distribution and uh, power delivery networks on, not power delivery. <laughs> Power distribution in the AC. Okay, great. Data converters, digital to analog converters. This is really nice. So you get a little bit of theory here uh, with the application and you get to see what happens in the DAC, the DAC. This is good. This is really a good useful skill to have. It's very practical because I'm using this skill now at my job. Uh, it, they, it's a requirement They're like, hey, are you good with digital to analog? Do you understand with do you understand what 4.095 means? Why do we have that? That's something that I should be able to look at and say, oh, that has to do with the uh, resolution. That's related to the resolution of the ADC, probably two to the however many bits, maybe two to the 12 bits for uh, 4,096 4, data points for my, or bits for my resolution, right? So things like that. Um, what else do we have? We have P-SPICE advanced analysis. So here, this is where we look at, how do I say, the advanced analysis is useful for when you need to, you need to see how your circuit operates if the values of your devices change with respect to temperature increases, with respect to, say, tolerances, because you can get a 10% capacitor, right, or 20% capacitor. That can be plus or minus the, the capacitance by 20%. So we want to see how that circuit behaves, the sensitivity of the circuit with respect to certain operating conditions. When does the circuit blow up in your smoke analysis? What is the Monte Carlo analysis? Let me see. Uh, predicts the behavior of a circuit statistically, part values, blah, blah, blah. And you can, you can do a lot of things. The optimizer helps you with part selection and whatnot based on your results. P-SPICE application notes. This is the really good stuff, okay? The behavioral modeling modeling really helps me when I uh, need to do need to simulate something like a, a sawtooth waveform generator, but I don't want to take the time to calculate the op amp or feedback network I need. I just want to generate something quickly, doing square roots and all of that stuff, not worrying about uh, p spice conversion issues. I use this heavily in power electronic circuits just to get something quick and off the ground and also digital control of feedback loop circuits, okay? We also have a modeling quartz crystal, so that's really cool, shot key diodes, the ferrite bead. Ferrite beads are very important for noise mitigation, reducing noise. And let's see here, modeling relays. Uh, on one of my jobs, my previous jobs, I was modeling relays for circuit logic, which is very useful. And you can even create eye diagram, diagrams for digital signals, detecting how much inter-symbol interference you might have. This is typically with the high-speed digital design, okay? All right, so there are a lot of things you can do. My favorite area is the power electronics. And of course, one of the most popular power electronics uh, circuits is the well this is the forward converter actually the flyback converter is especially one of the most popular but the forward converter is good too 
And so, yeah, just take a look at these tutorials. This is just an overview to get you, to give you an idea of how much knowledge, how much information is available in ORCAD Capture, right? Take a look at it. See what you can simulate. These guides show you, and you can open the design and get start getting familiar with P-Spice, all right? This is the season of P-Spice. It seems everybody's interested in P-Spice this summer. So try it out. Uh, see what kind of solutions you can come up with or find. Uh, see what kind of errors you run into, P-Spice issues and conversion <laughs> problems, right? Uh, but let, uh, you can use this to really start getting into P-Spice and get really good. All right. Thank you for watching this overview. And if you have any questions about how to use P-SPICE or comments on your experience with the P-SPICE simulation, leave your comments below, email me, you know, people ask me questions, and we can discuss it, okay? So you have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.